In this screencast, I'm going to show you some basic features of the new locking graphs that were introduced in JProfiler 6. Instead of profiling a real-world application, we're going to profile a small test class because it's much easier to reason about monitors when you are able to look at the code. Now, what does this sample code do? It uh, spawns three threads. They all do some work with the same monitor, then they wait for that monitor, and in the end they're all woken up. The code is uh, contained in this blog entry right below the screencast. Now let's start the session. I've prepared a session here named Monitor Test. One thing worth mentioning is that I have added a JVM startup trigger that starts monitor recording as soon as the JVM is started. This is necessary so uh, that we don't have to manually start monitor recording and we can see all the events in the locking history graph from the startup of the JVM. Now here we go. We're looking at the current locking graph. There are red dashed lines, black lines and yellow lines. The red lines are for blocking, the black lines are for owned monitors and the yellow lines are for waiting. Now obviously this is happening all far too quickly. We can just look at very static situations like this one here, but uh, uh, the more complex stuff is, is happening far too quickly. So we have to go to the locking history graph uh, for a more, more detailed analysis. In the locking history graph you can navigate through all recorded monitor events with these controls here. And an alternative means of navigation is a timeline down here where bunches of monitor events are painted as blue lines. When you hover over those blue lines, you can see in the status bar how many events are in uh, the bunch below the mouse cursor. Here we have got three events. Here there's just one event. And you can navigate to the event under the mouse cursor just by clicking on it. And then that becomes the currently displayed event. Now let's look at the first event. Here thread 1 has acquired the monitor and is working and thread 2 is blocking on the same monitor. Uh, the threads are, are created with an offset of 500 milliseconds. Now why did we not see a separate event with thread 1 acquiring the monitor. This is because it was an uncontended monitor entry and only contended monitor entry are shown in locking history graph. Let's go to the next event. Here we see thread 3 coming to the party. It's also trying to acquire um, the same monitor. Now we can see that thread 1 is already holding up two other threads. And uh, when we go to the next event, we can see in the timeline that three seconds have passed now. Thread 1 has finished its work, uh, work here being just sleeping for three seconds for the sake of simplicity. It uh, starts waiting on the very same monitor and will subsequently, within a matter of, few, few, of a few milliseconds, give up its monitor ownership. Uh, and then one of the other two threads can acquire that monitor. And um, as we can see in the next event, that is actually happening. Uh, thread 3 got lucky here. It um, acquired the monitor and it is now working. Uh, thread 2 is still waiting uh, to acquire the monitor. And three seconds later, the same thing that happened to thread 1 is now happening to thread 3. It starts waiting on the same monitor and it gives up the ownership of the monitor and thread 2 can now acquire the monitor and do its work. Now why is thread 2 not visible here? That's because the monitor is not contended. Only contended monitor entries are shown. Three seconds later when thread 2 finishes its work it appears again because it now uh, waits on the monitor and 20 seconds later all threads are woken up with a notify uh, method call and um, this happens in a random order. First thread 2 is woken up, then thread 3 is woken up and finally thread 1 is woken up and the last event is this blank graph 
that shows that all relationships between monitors and threads have been uh, dissolved. And at this point, you might uh, want to take a look at the sample code and rewatch the screencast to check if your understanding of the code matches with what you see in locking history graph.